How important exactly is pacing over a half an hour climb? Well, it's something we've been thinking about recently because a couple of days ago, when we'd finished filming our GCN videos for the day, Sai decided that he wanted to climb the lovely Sacalobra here as hard as he possibly could. Come on, Sai! Come on! Here we go! I did. And when I got to the top, it seemed quite clear that I'd paced it incredibly badly. Uh, I was the fourth fastest. Uh, for the first two kilometres, and the 56th fastest up the whole mountain. Still impressive, Sai, 56th well, thanks. fastest. Thanks, mate, but I did ride it like a junior. Anyway, we are back here, obviously, but Sai now has a power meter on his bike, so we're going to use that to help him pace himself from the start all the way to the finish and see just how much time he can lop off, if any. I'm going to get the excuses in early. It's been a long, hard week. Uh, I just had a big lunch. Um, oh, feeling quite tired. We had a late it. night last night. I've heard it all before. Journey. Okay, here we go. The bottom of Sacalobra. Now, the funny thing about pacing, aside from the fact I'm staring at my height, power meter is the fact that this feels really quite easy and so I know that by the time it gets to the top this effort is really going to be biting but right now we're going to have quite a pleasant conversation quite hard keeping it in the right power when the road ramps up. It's a real art form, I think, riding to a set pace. Especially when you're feeling like quite in control. Anytime I get out of the seat, boom, there's another 50 watts. Probably not boom, actually. I might be overselling my abilities. Past halfway onto the steepest bit and trying to nudge up the power to about 400. So it's going to start to really hurt. Well, I think the pacing wasn't far off. I managed to lift it just a smidge at the end, but you might be able to tell that was the limit, the absolute limit. Right, the results are in. Now, Sai si might not look like he's just done a 30 minute maximum effort, and he hasn't just done it because he's had to wait here for about 10 minutes for me to get here. But what were your times, Sai? Si? Uh, well, it's quite interesting actually. The results, unfortunately, on this second run, I was 40 seconds slower. What? Over the first segment where I was fourth the other day. But I managed to recoup that time and I was actually 27 seconds faster overall. Right, so pacing did work. For it you. did, but I learnt some very interesting things up there. Firstly, that I think I was actually too conservative at the bottom, so I did have a little bit too much time to recoup at the top. And then secondly, is that when I did try and nudge it up, the difference between below lactate threshold and above lactate threshold is a very fine line. Yeah. In this case, it was a case of 30 watts. And so that meant that I very quickly went into oxygen debt on that second half of the climb. Yeah, so you couldn't quite make up perhaps as much as you should have been able to nope. had you paced it evenly throughout. So I think what we had learnt are two key things here. Firstly, that pacing does indeed make you faster on an effort like that. But secondly, 
that in order to pace perfectly, you really do need to know what your functional threshold power was. Now, Sai was kind of estimating it at the bottom, probably underestimated slightly. If you were to do the effort again tomorrow or perhaps the next day, Please you would start the first part perhaps 10 watts higher and then probably be able to maintain overall a higher average power. Also, whilst I was plodding up here, I thought of an analogy. And that is that pacing is a little bit like telling someone not to eat too quickly. So if you slow down your eating at the beginning of a meal, it gives your brain a chance to process what you've already eaten. And the likelihood is that you then won't overeat at the end. And it's a bit the same with power. If you give your brain the chance to understand the effort that you've already put in, then you'll be much safer later on having not gone into the wreck. It's funny, my pacing strategy is naturally like my eating strategy then. Yeah. Full gas. <laughs> anyway. Uh, now. Like we said, FTP is absolutely crucial. So if you want to know how to find your FTP, we've got a video showing you exactly that. And you can get through to it by clicking just up there. Or to learn how to pace time trials where Dan takes you through the process, not just using power meter, but also on heart rate and on feel as well, which is very difficult, then click just down there to get through to that video. Yeah, or to subscribe to the Global Cycling Network, click on the globe, which is just around here.